How is it going everybody? You're watching Then About Tech and today I'm going to show you the 10 settings you have to turn off in iOS 17. Those will be great for privacy, saving battery life and much much more. Let's get started. Alright, so the first setting you have to turn off is of course right here on your settings under general and then airdrop. And you'll see right here bringing devices together which will be turned on by default this is a new feature exclusive to ios 17 as i said everything here is new to ios 17. so the way this works is like this if you bring one iphone close to another they'll connect as you can see and share information just like that without you having to press anything or confirm anything. This, as you can see, is called name drop and is the fact that if you bring an iPhone close to another, they'll share the contact poster. So they'll share the profile picture, your number, your email and everything like that. The only reason why you didn't see here the contact poster of the other iPhone is because both of them are mine and they're registered on the same Apple ID, okay? Otherwise, you would see that iPhone contact information here in my iPhone right there. Meaning that anyone running iOS 17 can just bring their iPhone close to my iPhone and get my personal information. My photo, number, email, work address, home address, and anything that you have set on your contact on your iPhone. And I think this is a bad thing when you're talking about security and privacy, so I don't want other people doing that, bringing their iPhone close to mine and getting my information because of name drop. So what I do is turn off bringing devices together. And when I wanna use AirDrop, I use the old fashioned way where I have to select the person. And if I wanna receive stuff, same thing, I have to accept. I don't want this automatic sharing thing. Setting number two, again, right here on your settings, scroll down just a bit until you see face ID and passcode, and then type in your lock screen passcode. Mine is super hard, as you can see. And right here, if you scroll down until you see your passcode, right? Uh, we have the possibility to change passcode and that's normal, right? Sometimes we want to change our passcode, maybe because we've been using it for a long time, but generally because we think somebody knows it. We think somebody's seen it, so we want to change it, get a new one so that person can't have access to our iPhone, right? So that's the thing. In iOS 17, when you go ahead and tap on change passcode, and of course you're going to need to type in the old one, and then the new one, as you can see right here, for the next 72 hours, you can use your previous passcode. So let's talk about that because most people don't take a look at this and don't realize this. So then let's create a new one, okay? So I'm gonna do almost the same, right? Just to create a new one. So I verified it, I created a new one, and let's wait for it to load. And as you can see right here, if we scroll down just a bit, you'll see this option, temporary passcode reset. So what I wanted to do is turn off this setting. Of course, this is a cool thing if you think about it, right? Because you're changing your passcode, so then for 72 hours, you can still use both your old one and your new one. But again, most people change their passcode because they think somebody else has it. So if you don't turn off this option right here, for 72 hours, that other person will still be able to access your iPhone with the old passcode, okay? So that's why I think it's a good option to go ahead and expire previous passcode now, okay? Expire now, so then you only be able to use the new one, the one it just created. Heading back to our settings, let's go ahead and open up screen time, and I want you to take a look at screen distance, as you can see right here. Take a look if that's turned on, because what this feature will do is it'll analyze how close your face is to the screen, okay, to the display right here of the phone using Face ID, and then if you're actually too close, I mean, uh, using your iPhone, uh, watching videos, whatever, too close to the screen, 
it'll give you a warning. So this is only interesting for kids. So if you have screen time set up for your child, I do think it's a good thing. But if it's your phone, sometimes that's annoying. Sometimes it gives you warnings and interrupts a lot if you're watching a video or something. So I do recommend that you turn this option off. Okay, of course, you have to, to use here and type in your screen time passcode, as you can see, and then that's it. Of course, pay attention and don't really use your iPhone too close to your face. Now let's talk about contact poster. Remember I talked about contact poster when I was talking about name drop? Yeah, there's something else we need to pay attention to. So if you open up your phone, and then you tap here on your card, where of course you will see your contact poster, right? With all your information, as I said, your photo, number, email, and everything like that. So it has a lot of information from you, a lot of personal information that you don't necessarily wanna share with all your contacts. And that's the thing, in iOS 17, when you call any of your contacts, if they are in iOS 17 as well, they will see your contact poster with your photo and other information. And sometimes you don't want that because sometimes you're calling somebody that you don't want them to see anything from you, just your phone number, right? So I do recommend that you tap here on contact photo and poster and you change that option to share automatically, right? From contacts only to always ask. So then it'll only share your information, your photo and so on. When you're calling a contact, if you manually say so, if you manually allow, all right? Moving on, let's get back to our settings. Scroll down a bit until we see Siri and search. It's always Siri, right? So the thing is, by default, in iOS 17, you will have listen for Siri or Hey Siri. So that's the thing. Uh, now, it'll not only be listening and waiting for Hey Siri, the command Hey Siri, but also, as you can see, but also just Siri. And that's not really good because just a word like that can cause so many unwanted requests. It can be triggered so easily. So I don't recommend that you use Siri or Hey Siri. I actually prefer to use off. So then when you wanna use Siri, you press the side button, right? And then uh, say your command. But if you really, really like Hey Siri, at least use the middle option. So Hey Siri and not really Siri or Hey Siri, because as I said, it's super easy to trigger if you have this option turned on. In my opinion, turn it off. It's the best thing you can do. Still in our settings right here, scroll down quite a bit until you see music. If you use Apple Music, this feature is super important. So scroll down a bit more until you see crossfade. Take a look if this option is turned on on your iPhone, if you are, of course, an Apple Music user. Uh, and I recommend that you turn it off because the way this works is uh, when you're listening to a song, right, and it's close to the end, it's gonna fade out. So the sound is gonna be very low and the volume will be coming down, right? And then for the next song, it'll be slowly going up. So then it'll do this transition between songs. But the thing is, it's gonna do this between every single song. So you're not really gonna listen to the full song because it's gonna fade out and then fade in every single time. So I don't recommend this feature particularly. I think it's kind of annoying actually. Uh, you can test it out, but in my opinion, I prefer it turned off. Moving on, let's go ahead here and open up our notifications. And right here we have screen sharing, notifications on. So I do recommend that we turn this off because this means that when you are sharing your iPhone screen, sharing to an Apple TV or an other Apple device, no matter what device you're sharing your iPhone screen with, your notifications will not show up just like in do not disturb, you know? Because if you have this turned on, you're sharing your screen, there's a high chance you're presenting something, you're with somebody else, and then your notifications will be popping up. So this is good for privacy, and of course, to not be in your way. So then turn this off, when sharing your iPhone screen so then you won't receive any notifications. Now let's talk about standby mode, all right? Because there are some settings that I do think you should take a look at. So uh, still here in your settings, scroll down until you see standby, and then we have two important options. 
First, show notifications once again. Depending on what you're doing while using standby, sometimes you're watching a video, sometimes you're cooking something, you're taking a look at a recipe or something while your iPhone is in standby mode. Other times you're just sleeping and using standby mode. So then receiving notifications while in standby mode can be very annoying and I generally don't like it. So that's why I turn off this option. So then when my iPhone is in standby mode, I don't get notifications. Please keep in mind that critical notifications will still go through. Still here, talking about standby, if you tap on display, the last option is called motion to wake. And again, depending on how you use standby mode, and I know most people use it when they're sleeping, right? They put their iPhone on the bedside table and use them as the alarm clock or something. So I do recommend that you turn off this option because this means that your display will be turned off throughout the night. And even if you move, it won't turn on. Because if you have the feature turned on, as you move, and we all move at night when we're sleeping, the screen will turn on. So then you have this light uh, in your room, which is dark, and then it's so annoying and it's gonna interrupt you and disturb you. So if you use this uh, as your alarm clock or something, I do recommend that you turn this off. So then motion will not wake, the screen will not turn on the screen. And last but not least, let's go back once again to our settings, scroll down quite a bit, until we see messages and then right here we have iMessage apps. Let's take a look at this. By default, all your apps that are compatible with iMessage will be here turned on. So then when you're actually using the messages app, right, and you tap on plus so you can take a look at more, every single app will show up right here and this is annoying. This will be extremely cluttered, it's not nice, it's not a nice interface. So what I recommend you to do, of course, is to go ahead here and disable the apps that you don't use in iMessage. You're not disabling the apps, you're not deleting the apps, nothing like that, you're just removing them from iMessage view. So then, if you come back here and we go back and more, as you can see, we have much fewer options, just the ones we want to use, okay? So, I super recommend that you go ahead and do that and disable the iMessage apps that you don't use because probably they'll be the majority. And so, that's it. Those are the 10 settings that you have to turn off in iOS 17. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next one as usual, guys. Bye-bye.